Does your N8N workflow look solid to you? AI is never as reliable as one might think. In this video, I'll show you how Eval reveals the real issues and how to fix them. Hi, I'm Alex, ambassador and N8N expert. Today, we will make your AI automations truly reliable thanks to Eval, the new essential feature of N8N. Today, I will take a concrete example. I have a workflow, an AI agent that analyzes Reddit posts and it must detect if it is a business opportunity and with what level of urgency. And so before Eval, it was difficult to know if the agent was responding correctly or hallucinating. I want my agent to be able to distinguish if it's someone uh, sharing their project, like I created this, which is the case here. And so it's not an opportunity or if it's a post where someone is looking for a solution, how to automate. And there is, it's a business opportunity where you need to jump in. So here's what we're going to do. First, we will connect the eval node with a data set of real or synthetic examples. Then we will connect a large language model with a prompt adapted to our goal. Next, we will measure the accuracy of the results by comparing the output of the large language model to the expected correct answer. Then we will test the workflow by running an evaluation on the entire data set. Then we will adjust the prompt or change the model if necessary, then retest until we achieve maximum reliability. Let's go. Here I have my workflow starting on Reddit. So I have a Reddit node that will fetch a post from small businesses and see if it's a business opportunity, if it's people who need automation. So uh, then I have a basic LLM chain where I have a basic prompt and it's connected to open router. So open router, in fact, can access more than 200 models. So therefore, this will allow me to test the models as well to see the results. So generally, I start with the strongest model. I like GPT 4.1 and then I can downgrade to see if it holds up or not. So we are going to we are going to run it. I look at the structure here. So here I filter my post to see if there is content and then I extract the fields that interest me, namely the title and the content. And I want them to be the same as in my data set. So my data set is here. I created this one with uh, ChatGPT, but we could very well uh, run this workflow and record, log the results in an Excel file and thus make a data set with real data. Here, I generated it, and so uh, each time I have the title and the content, and uh, I have the expected response. So there, yes, it's an opportunity with a high urgency. Here is not one, so there is no urgency, etc. And I have 30 like that, okay? So you can very well generate them. You ask ChatGPT, it does that very well for you, and you copy that into a Google Sheet. Okay, so in my data set as well, what I did is I created other columns, uh, uh, business opportunity result and need urgency result. So that's when I will send my, uh, my real workflow, my test, it will record the answers here. And here it will be if the business opportunity is correct. So if this, the business opportunity result is equal to the business opportunity expected. And the same for the urgency correct, if it is, uh, if that one, the need urgency result is equal to the need urgency expected. And in this case, it means that my assessment is correct. So to do my evaluation on another branch, I will add another trigger, eval, there you go, evaluation, and it's this one on new evaluation event. Okay, and there I connect my data set, so eval test, and here, and there you go. Okay, back to Canvas. I connect this, so now if I run this, it will only launch the first line of the data set. Okay, then it will also go into the large language model. So here, there you go. Title and content must be equal to my classic execution branch. So here I execute the LLM uh, and chain. And what does it give me? It gives me this. Then here I add another eval node to see if we are on the evaluation branch or not. So check if evaluating, so if it is, evaluating, we will continue on that branch. 
and otherwise we'll just put something here no operation so it will just send the output okay there we go but actually we are on the evaluation branch so now we want to calculate if the answer is correct so this is where everything happens so here we will do it in a set node but it could also be done with a code node sometimes we could evaluate with ai and see if the answer is correct or not Bear with me, we'll do it together. So here is, uh, what I want to know is if my business opportunity and my urgency levels that have been calculated by the LLM here, then pass to the evaluation node, uh, correspond to what we hope for. So we put a triple equal here, uh, it's absolute equality. And we look here, so the business opportunity uh, expected here, and here I use what is called a ternary encode. So I put a question mark here and evaluate everything on the left. And if it's true, we put an output here, we put a one. And if not on the other side, we put a colon and another output, which here is zero. There you go. And we do the same for the urgency here so it's the urgency level that was evaluated by the language model and we check if it matches what we expect in the evaluation here so here high okay and similarly i do my ternary question mark so if it's true we put one if it's false we put zero there you go so that's one way to do it now there are cases where you will evaluate this with another language model etc it's up to you to create the solution to assess the accuracy of your solution and what your language model does then we add an eval node which is not mandatory that is set output so with that we will log these results on the google sheet okay so i reconnect my google sheet and here i add so i have already created the columns but they could be created on the fly so now if i execute this it will fill in here and then the last step i add another eval which is set metrics so that's what we want to evaluate so this one and this one and there we go now we are ready to evaluate so i go here in evaluations and i click run evaluation so while it's running we will be able to see that on my google sheet everything will be recorded here okay so there it is it's finished and i see that like business opportunity accuracy i have 0 0.92 which is not bad and for urgency accuracy i have 0 0.69 but i want to improve it because I don't want to write to someone and it not be a business opportunity, especially since I want to automate this also with credit. So I'm going to improve my prompt. So there you go. I replaced the earlier very basic prompt with a much more advanced one that I made with my GPT ultimate prompt generator that you can find in my community in the link in the description. And especially uh, I ask if the user is looking for help, suggestions, recommendations. So there, it's yes. But if, uh, for example, he is sharing something he built himself, it's no, like in the example of my real post on Reddit. So we are going to record that and restart the evaluation. There, my execution is complete. And now I see that I have reached 100% for business opportunity accuracy. And for urgency accuracy, I went from 0 0.7 to 0 0.87. So there you go. Now, we are going to run tests with GPT Nano and Mini. We'll start with Nano and restart an evaluation there. So I see that with Nano, it has dropped significantly even worse than with the first prompt. So here, the model plays a big role. And the same for urgency accuracy. Now I will try with Mini to see if it's a good idea. Here I see that the result is equivalent to 4.1 with the bad prompt since we are at 0.92. It should be noted that we also see uh, the tokens consumed and for the urgency accuracy we are still better than the than with the bad prompt. But so there you go. So we can evaluate the prompts, we can evaluate the models. Uh, you just need to change things and run evaluations. Now why is all this essential? In AI you can just rely on one test, it's hit or miss. Unlike traditional code, 
AI is non-deterministic, same input, sometimes different response. The model can hallucinate, invent, uh, skip a step. A prompt that worked yesterday might fail tomorrow. So what can we really evaluate with EVAL in N8N? Unlike a simple it works, it doesn't work. EVAL allows for a much finer measurement of the quality of an agent or a workflow. Here's what we can concretely monitor. The proper use of tools. Does the agent choose the right tools? Does it correctly call the APIs or consult the right database at the right time? The output structure, for example, does the response adhere to the expected format? the quality or relevance judged by another model. For example, we can ask an AI model to rate or check if the response is coherent, useful if there is no hallucination. Then we can see the cost, speed, compliance, track how many tokens are spent, how long the response takes, or if it follows certain rules. In short, by compiling these criteria, we no longer just see if it runs, we aim for robust, measured, and optimized automation. In short, the kind you can sell and make money with because it's solid. If this video helped you, consider liking, subscribing and activating the bell. It will really help me to make the channel known. And if you want to go further, I have put a link to my community in the description. Also, you can book a free strategic call if you have a complex project to automate. See you soon to automate together. Bye.